The CANC, or the Chinese Asian Nations Cooperative, also simply known as the Cooperative, were a powerful human federation formed in the late 21st century, as other countries around the globe and the emerging Middle Heavens would begin to do the same. But who exactly are the Cooperative and how did they play one of the most crucial roles in forming the Middle Heavens, up until their folding into the Union of Progressive Peoples? The CANC was formed in 2088. This action was taken after the rise of the 3WE and its own formation. The 3WE was formed from a conglomeration between the British and Japanese controlled territories of each as well as Mars and Titan. During this move they left the previously formed UNIC or the United Nations Interplanetary Corps. Socialist countries like China and Vietnam followed suit and formed what would come to be known as the CANC. The CANC would quickly secure its own territory amongst the stars in an area of known space that came to be called the Chinese Arm. By the year 2108 other socialist countries such as Russia moved to form the Union of Progressive Peoples or the UPP in further response to the development of the United Americas and their heavy ties to the Three World Empire. Fearing this growing rival power, the CANC helped establish the coalition of nations that was the UPP, however due to the still prevalent corporate precincts functioning within the economy of the CANC, it could not at this time completely fold into the UPP, mandates within the UPP forbid interaction with corporations, and so the CANC as this point would retain its individuality from the other superpowers of the Middle Heavens region. Russia, Germany, and Spain are dissatisfied with China's lack of commitment, but realize that they cannot sustain the Union at this time without Chinese support. Throughout its lifespan the CANC would remain an isolationist bloc and would get involved in conflict with the other superpowers of the Middle Heavens as their ideologies would often clash with those of the ones around them. In 2151 the CANC would support rebel colonists against the 3WE and the USCMC in a conflict known as the Hellene Uprising. Following on from that, the CANC would launch its full-scale invasion onto the planet Arcturus in 2158 with the USCMC launching Operation Arcturan Shield in response. In the following year of warfare and chaos, while the USCMC is able to liberate the planet and its people from CANC oppression in Operation Arcturan Freedom, much of the planet's inhabitants, their cultural and historical artifacts are looted or lost in the process. A devastating loss not only for the Arcturans but also for the Middle Heavens and our understanding of our corner of the galaxy as a whole. For many years the CANC would continue to operate both within and still outside of the UPP, and its interests. However, in the 2160 the Jingti Long Corporation presents evidence to the Middle Heavens that the CANC is stockpiling bioweapons and testing them on political prisoners. The UA is forced to act as the UAAC commits its entire armed forces and pushes into the Chinese arm, annexing territory from the CANC in order to protect the interests of the free colonies. Named for its location in the Keynes Venetici constellation, this conflict for control of the Chinese arm becomes known as the Dog War. The Dog War dredges on for two whole years before the UA instates a draft on the colonies as they fight to monitor and maintain newly acquired UA territory from the Chinese arm. It isn't until a Whalen Utani civilian contractor team exposes a CANC bioweapons production facility that the United Nations Interstellar Settlements Corps member nations pledge their forces to the UAS cause and create what is known as the AFF or the Allied Frontier Force in order to bring an end to the conflict and the CANC threat. The dog war concludes as the CANC sue for peace and the AFF force halts its advance at the Red Line. The Peng Ho Treaty of 2163 is signed. The treaty dictates new laws and regulations for the conglomerate nations moving forward. Some of the changes instituted by the treaty see that the Chinese arm is broken up into UA and Chinese territories, with what remains of the CANC being absorbed into the UPP, finally having no choice but to fold into their sister federation to survive. For their help in the war, the Jingti Long Corporation and other major ICSC holding corporations are awarded contracts to exploit former CANC worlds for the UA. Weyland Utani and Bio National are joint contracted to dismantle and dispose of the CANC's bioweapon factories and stores. The 3WE is awarded the territory of the former Chinese Canal, a route through their space to the now extinct Chinese arm. The AFF disbands with little reason to conduct activites in this region any further. While this would seemingly be the end of the line and story of the CANC now absorbed into the UPP, their presence would continue to be felt for many years following. As the Tynson campaign began, CANC forces and loyal civilians are given two years to leave the territory of the former Chinese arm. Under UAAC escort, cooperative refugees mount a massive exodus to the UPP border. CANC colonists that wish to stay are granted US citizenship, 
but are placed on a government watch list. Jinti Long Corporation founds the colony world of New China within ICSC space and opens colonization to any former cooperative refugees who wish to avoid both the UPP and the UA. Having increased in territory and armed might by absorbing what's left of the CANC and annexing their worlds, the UPP calls the 2100 seconds the progressive century. But remnants of the CANC still exist to this day with the borders of the ICSC on New China and at locations such as the freeports of Grand High, a moon in the GJ1230 AB star system. Many seek refuge from years of conflict and wish to maintain their independence from both the UA and the UPP. Some colonists suggest that the CANC remainant is likely waiting to strike at their next given opportunity. However, this is yet to be seen. If you really want to support what we do here and gain a bunch of awesome rewards, consider joining as a Project Akron channel member like company representatives, the Sith Lord 906, Lewis Perkins, and Jack Fleming Jr. Or like our team members, Ronchi, Ambrosia, and Carl from the Wargame Bootcamp. Until next transmission, this is Project Akron bringing the knowledge and the power directly to you.